So I want to get started with basically what the bigness of this whole problem is. So if you guys look at my foot right here, from the side, when you look at it from the side, you should see my, the blade of my foot flush against the, the surface of where I'm walking with no gaps. Now, ideally, from the side, you should see an arch. This shoe does not have an arch at the sole, but if it were to follow the contours of a normal foot, you would see that there is an arch there. So it's complicated because on the one side of the foot, it's flat, but on the other side, you've got this arch. So if you look at a footprint, if you got the big toe right here and the four smaller toes right there, on the outside, this should be flush to the ground and you've got the heel right there. However, on the inside, you've got that arch. So it's a fairly complicated structure, and we ask a lot of it. And ultimately, what happens is we're all running around all day wearing these things, shoes. And we start wearing shoes from a very young age. I mean, I've seen like really super cute, tiny Chuck Taylors about this big. They make Keens for kids that are about that big. And if you ever grab one of those shoes, they don't move, they don't bend. There's not a possible way they could because the rubber is too short to actually flex and move the way it should. And so we stick our feet in these shoes our entire life. And what this ends up acting like is a soft cast for your foot. So, <clears throat> The extreme of that would be the Chinese foot binding. You all saw pictures of that in your textbooks of what these women's feet looked like after years of binding their feet. They didn't really look like a foot at all. And for somebody who is indigenous and has not had shoes their entire life, our feet look sick, weak, and weird to those people because this acts like a soft cast for your foot. Can you imagine if from your first year of life onward, Every single day before you left the house, you put something that was this stiff with zero dexterity for your fingers over your hand. Would you be able to write your name? Would you be able to drive your car? Would you be able to brush your teeth? You would not. Your hand would be neurologically incompetent. Do you understand what I'm saying when I say neurologically incompetent? Your feet are the exact same. When you're born, your brain dedicates just as much sensory development to your feet as it does your hands. And in a perfect world, every step we take sends our brain vital information about the surface that we're on to our brain. The foot sends it to the brain so that we can understand what kind of surface we're on. So we can move our foot. Without that, the foot gets stupid. And add to that, not only are we in a soft cast for our foot all day, but on top of that, we're walking around on hard level surfaces 24-7. And so our foot does not have to conform to the terrain. Our foot does not have to understand what it's stepping on. Your foot already thinks it knows what it's stepping on, which is why it's so easy to twist an ankle. Twisted ankles really just shouldn't happen that easy. But you step wrong off a curb and all of a sudden your foot can't handle that. But in reality, in a normal circumstance, it absolutely should be able to. Now, the last thing I'm going to say is that laces accelerate this process. Because where this lace ties down is right on the arch of my foot. And as I tie this shoe tighter and tighter to give myself better ground feel, I'm further compressing my arch over time. And so what ends up happening is this arch that's supposed to be this beautiful arch flattens out and the whole foot gets flat. Now, when we look at it from the back, okay? So now imagine we're looking at it from the back. We should see basically two lines and your heel. And those lines... You can think of as the bones of my leg, or you can think of it as my Achilles tendon, should be perfectly straight up and down. 
However, <clears throat> let's say that this is the inside and this is the outside. When my arch drops, all of a sudden this goes like this. Do you see how that happens? So you can look at it right now on my foot and see what's going on. If I artificially drop that arch, do you see what happens to my foot? Do you see what happens to my leg? My leg is forced to internally rotate. My thigh is forced to internally rotate. And what ends up happening is there is a tremendous amount of increased pressure on the outside of the knee and on the cartilage on the outside of the knee, and a tremendous amount of torque and tension on the inside of the knee. Extrapolate that for 20, 30, 50, 60 years. Do you think your knee is going to hold up the way it would if all of the forces were distributed evenly and perfectly across your knee joint for the entire time? Absolutely not. It's like the alignment of your car. If your car has good alignment, your tires last a lot longer. If you've got one tire that's towed in too much, or you've got camber that's too much, that tire is going to wear out. So we're not talking about tires that are completely replaceable. We're talking about your body parts, which are theoretically replaceable in some cases, but there is nothing as good as the original equipment, period. Ask anybody that's ever had that kind of a surgery done. Any kind of a knee replacement, spinal surgery, you know, ankle joint, any kind. The original equipment is absolutely the best. We want to take care of what we got. Now, <clears throat> when we extrapolate this to the knee, basically we've got the knee right there, and then we've got the foot, foot right there, and then you've got this bow-legged thing going on. Now, I've exaggerated, but that does happen. And long-term, we can see the effects of this very severe. So, what we need to do is we need to start back from scratch. We need to re-educate our feet neurologically, how to be feet again, and we need to slowly but surely re-strengthen our feet so they can do the job we're asking it to do in the face of years of neglect and not working the most right way. Does that make sense? And not only does this translate to better foot, ankle, knee, hip, low back health, it also translates to stronger lifts. It translates to better balance and independence as we get older. A lot of you guys might be you know, struggling with pistol squats, right? But if your foot's not stable, you're never going to be able to do that pistol squat. I want to be able to, when I'm older, slip on my way out of the shower and catch myself. So I'm constantly challenging my balance and challenging the strength of my feet. So let's get right into it. The first thing I want you guys to do is you are going to grab your phones, grab a partner. This is not going to be somebody we're working with long term, right? We're just helping each other take some pictures and pop those shoes off. Like, we'll so Jamie, thing Jamie, do you think you can help me out and be my volunteer, be my yeah, helper? It'll be, it'll be Come on, Come on, Come on. All right, guys, <clears throat> take a look over here, and this is what we're going to do. Jamie's going to help me out, okay. and Jamie, all you're going to do is stand right there. <laughs> now, if... I'm Jamie's partner. We're going to pretend that this is Jamie's phone. And I'm going to bust out the camera on the phone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from the back here and I'm going to get as low as I can. And I'm going to take a picture of basically Jamie's lower half. And what we want to see here is what's going on with the feet, the ankles, and the knees. And this is going to give you a much better idea than your own personal impression about what's going on with your lower extremities. All right. Thank you, Jamie. Can we get a round of applause for my awesome helper? Good job. All right. So do that, and then we will reconvene. All right. So now, armed with the knowledge of what you actually look like and what your feet and ankles actually look like, what you can do is over time track your progress because it absolutely is possible to rebuild your arches. It is possible to rebuild the neurological competence of your feet and actually improve the angle of your knees by helping out your feet long term. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're all gonna warm up. 
And before any workout, the Cordo Chiropractic team, what do we do? Stretch. Nope. Before any planks, that's what it is. We do planks. All right. So now I do need your timer. Actually, no, I got this. Okay, so what we're going to do, guys, is the goal here is a two minute front plank. Do as much of it as you can. Do not feel like you have to do the whole thing. If you've got a 30 second plank, that's awesome. If you've got a 10 second plank, that's great. After our two minute front plank, we're going to go to a one minute on each side. And then we're going to do a one minute hollow hold. Anytime we do a clinic, you're going to understand that we need to warm up our core before we move anything. And if you need any modifications, just come on and look up here and I'll help you with the modifications as well. So let's get started into that front plank. Now if you need a modification, modification number one is up on the hands. That takes pressure off the shoulders. Modification number two is if you want to be on the elbows, you can put your knees to the ground just like that. Or you can even do both, knees to the ground and hands in the air, and that's going to take a lot of pressure off the core. But if you can do this traditional plank, even if you've got it for 20 seconds, we're going to be good to go. No stress. You start from where you're at. All right, that's one minute down. Great job, gang. If you need an extra challenge, you can start pulling your feet out. And back in. All right, we're going to switch in 10 seconds. Ready to switch. And two, one, switch to your side. Now, if you need some modifications here, modification number one is come up onto your hand. Modification number two is bring your knee down to the floor. Modification number three is knee to the floor and hand in the air, and that should take a lot of pressure off the core. But gold standard is going to be feet stacked. If you need extra pressure here, you can push through your top hand and challenge that core even more. 15 more seconds. You guys are crushing it. Okay, we're switching in. Five, three, ready to switch and switch. Other side down. Again, look up here for the modifications. You can come up to your hand. You can stand the elbow and bring your knee down to the ground. Or you can do knee on the ground and hand. And that's going to be the least amount of pressure on the shoulder and on the core. 15 more seconds, and we'll switch to a hollow hold. <clears throat> Three, two, one, and switch. Gold standard is feet and hands roughly six inches from the ground. But if you need less challenge... Bring your arms up. Less challenge than that. Bring the legs up into a tabletop, and you can do what's called a dead bug. This is still a good core challenge. Good news, guys. 15 more seconds. Ten. Five. Three. Two. One. Great job. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so planks before we do our workout are extremely important because planks get our core and our spine ready for activity. It is essential that you activate your core before doing any workout. Now we get to warm up our feet. So everybody come on this side and line up with, uh, with line up right here with me. One line right there. The first thing we are going to do, these are called foot drills. Foot drills are an amazing way to activate your feet. They were invented by an amazing mentor of mine, Dr. Russ Ebbets. The story goes that he was training with the Russian Olympic track and field team. And he realized that these Olympians had shit shoes. They were awful. 
And he went up to the Russian coach. He's like, I don't understand it. How do you guys not have all these foot and ankle in injuries? And the Russian coach was like, I don't know. I guess we have strong feet. And that was the light bulb for Dr. Ebbets. So <clears throat> he understood that if he could strengthen his athletes' feet, there would be less injuries, and therefore they would have a more winning season. He then went on to coach one of the most successful NCAA women's track and field teams in collegiate history. So here's what we're going to do. You guys are going to walk out to this seam right here, <clears throat> okay? And the first thing we're going to start by doing is walking duck foot, just like this. Now, slow down. We don't need to be waddling, right? What you want to do is still take your foot through the most normal walk that you possibly can. Heel strike, roll off of the blade of your foot, and then through the midfoot, through the, <clears throat> through the ball of your foot, and then toe off with your big toe. And you're going to do that all the way down. When you get to the back, you're going to switch directions, and we're going to go backwards the entire way. Take your time, guys. This is not about speed. This is about activating your foot. All right, let's do it. Opens your hips. Absolutely. Keep those knees bent. Good. Stay supple in your feet. Really get your toes out. Nice job, gang. All right. The next one we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to go down and then backwards on the way back. But this time, we're going to do it pigeon-toed. But really take your time, get through, start activating that foot, feel your foot, get strong through that arch. Let's do it. Yep, this helps with internal rotation of your hips for sure. Helps open up those glutes. The next one we are going to do is you are going to walk on the outsides of your feet. Really take your time with this one, all right? We should... Heel strike, we should come through the blade of our foot and then just keep the foot up as we walk, nice and slow. The girls are killing them. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yep, nice and slow. Get those knees bending. Get like a normal gait going. Try and keep your pelvis nice and stable. Let your legs move. Let them be supple. Let your hips move. <gasps> Great. All right, this next one admittedly is the hardest. We're going to see the most hands going crazy on this one right here, and we're going to walk on the insides of our feet. This is a tremendous opportunity to start getting the arches of your feet strong again, because if I'm work walking on the inside, I have a good opportunity to get my toe really pushed into the ground, get that arch engaged, and again, we're just going to take nice slow steps. Notice that my pelvis is level. I'm not doing one of these things. I'm not doing one of these peg leg things. I'm really just trying to get my legs moving, get my knees bending, get my feet moving. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> this is one of the most powerful exercises to help strengthen those arches and fight those flat feet. Awesome. Okay, the next one we're going to do is on your toes, stay on your toes, but we're going to go backwards both ways. This one's kind of easy. Um, for us guys, it's a little bit trickier to stay balanced. For you ladies, you're kind of used, used to this a little bit more. But important than that, nonetheless, use the whole ball of your foot. All right, for this next one, okay, when you're doing this at home by yourselves to help rehab your feet, if you want to put your shoes back on, that's great. We're not going to put our shoes back on right now. We've got too much more work to do. So if this is too painful, just don't do this one. Just know that at home, if it is too painful right now, put your shoes back on and try it again. And what we're going to do this time is we are going to walk on our heels. Now, this is the one that if you have any kind of a shin splint going on, this is the one that really helps strengthen these muscles through here and helps combat those shin splints. So we're going to be on our heels, forward and backwards. Good job. Now you got to go this way. Don't slam your heels. Bend your knees. Really... All right, so who, who felt a burn on that one in the front of the legs? Yeah. Okay, so what ends up happening is over time, right, as adults, our feet start to point more and more and more. 
and we lose that what's called dorsiflexion, the ability to move your toe towards your shin. Now for this little guy, guaranteed we could put his big toe on his shin. He's that flexible. Right. Kids are born with that level of flexibility in their feet, but as we get older, we stop lifting our foot like that, and as we sleep, too, our feet are pointed under the blanket. So we lose that dorsiflexion. Now, if you have any intentions of doing really good squats in your life and squatting a lot of weight, as you know, you need that good dorsiflexion to get low, but to keep your spine engaged so you can lift the most weight as humanly possible. But we got to work on that dorsiflexion, and that's another awesome thing that that last one does. So we are all set with foot drills now. That means our feet, our ankles are warmed up and ready for action. Now we're going to get into the guts of challenging those muscles again to strengthen them. So what we're going to do is I want to have you guys grab a band, preferably one of the wider ones, and you're going to grab a plate. Now, if you're newer to this whole foot thing, grab a, a thin plate. Um, I'm going to grab um, a couple 45s just to show you what we're going to be doing here. But you need a band. You need plates. Let's go do that. Okay. We're not going to be lifting these weights, gang. We're going to be using them to step on. But the first thing we're going to do is we are going to challenge the arches of our feet. Lay your band out in front of you. And you are going to take your foot with the arch of your foot at the end of the band. And you are going to try to roll the band up by scrunching it with your foot as much as you possibly can. Which is going to mean you're going to have to grab the band with your toes. You're going to have to pull it with your arch. And we're going to work this one foot here for 30 seconds. And go. Such a now at home, all you need is a towel on the floor to work this. We don't have a ton of towels in the CrossFit gym, so the band presents an exceptionally um, additional challenge because you have to try and roll the band up with your foot. Use your toes to grab it. Good job, gang. It's not a race, and the more you work it, the better you're going to get. All right, now. Lay it back out and switch. That was 30 seconds of work. Great job. You should be feeling that in the arch of your foot. Pulling through that arch. There we go. Now we're getting it. There it is. Nice work. Feeling that through your toes, through the arch of your foot. Beautiful. It's going to get that arch nice and strong. I didn't start the timer. <laughs> All right, 10 more seconds of this. Once you start getting it going, it, it goes. All right, there it is. Yes, the towel is much easier. Great job. Okay. So we've challenged some strength. Now we're going to challenge some balance, okay? A lot of times we'll warm up before a workout and we like to do leg swings. And most of the time we do leg swings as we're supported on the rig. If you feel like you need some support right now, go to the rig and grab one of those vertical supports. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some leg swings, okay? And we're gonna start with leg swings forward and backwards. All right, we're gonna do 10 swings. If you don't need the ring, the rig, now is the time to work on that balance and really focus on keeping a little bit of a bend in your knee and feel your foot engage the floor. Feel both sides of the pad of your foot. Feel the blade of your foot. Feel your heel. And all of those areas should be reaching toward the floor. Let's switch legs. We're going to do another 10 swings. And you're working on balance here. Great. Now we're going to do side swings. So these swings, your right leg is going to go across your body and then out as far as it can. And remember, balance here is important. That's what we're working on. Bend in your knee. Reach out to all of the corners of your feet with this exercise here.
All right, switch. Reaching across the body and swinging out sideways. Reaching with all of the corners of your foot. And that's it. Awesome. Okay. You should be feeling that in your thighs. Hip flexors, hip adductors, hip abductors, and you should be feeling it in your foot. Tomorrow morning, if you wake up and you are sore from your knee down, you did it right today. Good job. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to challenge balance again. You can work up to as big of a step as you want to. But right now we're going to start with a smaller step. The other areas that you can work on this are at home on your stairs, right? You've got railings there and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to start working on some balance. And I'm going to challenge my balance by squatting down and touching my heel to the front. Then I'm going to come back up. Feel how much that ankle has to bend forward for that to happen. Keep your hips stable and allow your foot to reach out and balance as you touch the front. Then you're gonna work on touching the side. You're gonna go out as far as you can to the side, reach out as far as you can, see how that knee has to bend, see how that foot has to stay stable, slow down and work stability through these positions. And then you're gonna reach out toward the back as far as you can. See how the knee has to stabilize, the foot has to stabilize. You should be feeling tired at this point, and if you're not, slow down, restabilize your hips. And now this is the tough one. We're gonna kind of peer, um, kind of curtsy or pirouette. We're gonna go across the other side of the body as far out as you can. It's a curtsy, yes. as far as you can, right there. <laughs> and again, awesome. All right, let's switch feet now. So again, we're gonna go down. And as far out as you can to the front, really work that knee stability, work that balance, work that foot staying strong through that position, and slow down. For those of you guys that have knee issues, you'll find sometimes up the stairs is fine, but down the stairs is a real challenge. It's because your knee doesn't know how to do this anymore. It doesn't know how to stabilize this position as you're stressing the quads and the ACL. All right, we're going to go out to the side again as far as you can. Good. Awesome. Let's do three there. Good. Slow down as far out to the side as you can. Excellent. Now we're going to go to the back. And my leg's tired, guys. This is a lot of work here. As far out to the back as you possibly can. Awesome. So on top of working this at home on the stairs, you can also work this in the shower. Now, don't kill yourself in the shower, but I often try to wash my feet without holding on to anything for balance because balance is really important. So I'll wash my feet in the shower this way, and if I want an extra challenge, I will close my eyes because that's a very different balance center in your brain. So we've got those curtsies to do. Three more here as far out as you can. Nice and slow. And then again, the higher the step, the more challenge you can um, put through this. Excellent. Okay. Great job, gang. So now, the last thing we're going to do together as a group is we're going to stretch out. But before we do that, I want to show you some of the implements that I use at home. So the first one... This is a balance board. If you care about the brand, this is a voodoo board. Um, it's a really cool company out of uh, Canada, I want to say. And we got these when I was in chiropractic school. They last a long time. They're about 100 bucks, at least back then. But what I do on this is barefoot preferably. The first step was I just learned how to balance on this. And so we would watch TV or we would game or we would just stand around in circles and chat and study, and then we would start just learning how to balance. Once you've got the balance thing all good to go, all right, then you can start challenging yourself 
and start working squats on this. So being able to squat from this position and maintain balance really helps with your bottom position, helps you stay fit and healthy, all right? And then once you get that all nailed down, you can start working and challenging your one-legged balance. And this is very tough because it takes a lot of foot coordination to make this happen. <clears throat> You'll notice I'm a little wobbly through there, keeping it through there. So you're gonna work on this and then eventually you can work on doing pistols from this position. And working the balance through there is an amazing way to keep your lower extremities strong. Now, if you don't wanna go with a balance board, okay, you can make one of these things out of some plywood and a one by one or a two by two. You don't have to get crazy with it. These are fun because they kind of feel like you're surfing or snowboarding or whatever. Now, even more therapeutic than that, you can go with a BOSU ball. This is really cool because you can use it in two different ways. You can use it right here like this and one-legged, it provides 360 degrees of challenge, not just the 180 that the balance board does. So this is extremely challenging. And if you switch out your step drill with the BOSU ball, it's a whole new level of difficulty. All right, <clears throat> on top of that, you can flip this around and then you can work this position with the BOSU ball, just learning how to balance it first, but then eventually you can work on your squats and the whole deal. And you can work on this, challenging it with one foot um, as well. These things are gonna be a lot easier to access than those, and I think that these have more of a therapeutic benefit, but admittedly, the balance board there is more fun. All right, so, Let's switch over to stretch mode, and all we're gonna do is put these plates away, put the bands away, and you're gonna grab a barbell. Okay, so, in your training, whenever you're learning something new, or trying to get better at something you always do, <clears throat> this is my priority list. Step number one, and the most important thing to achieve is stability. If you are not stable, you are going to hurt yourself you are going to damage body tissues. And even if it doesn't happen right then and there, that's what you're gonna be working on long-term, is damaging your body tissues. So stability needs to be number one. Number two, then you work on strength. This order is especially true if you're starting yoga. Stability number one, strength number two. If you're doing CrossFit, bodybuilding, rock box, kickboxing, tie bow, I don't care what it is, this is the priority list. And after you've got stability and after you've got strength, then you start working into the flexibility. And you will notice that the flexibility comes as you work through the stability and the strength. So we are going to work on now stretching out our feet, knees, ankles like you've never done it before. So we're going to start with just some simple calf stretches. So in this position here, we're gonna start off with a straight leg, and then with your other leg, you're gonna snake around it, just like this, and use it to gently straighten out your leg even more, trying to get your heel to the ground with a straight leg. All right, we're gonna do that for 12 seconds. Good, straight leg, try to get that heel to the ground. And after a 12 count, you switch. You can, feel, you can feel pulling through the calf. You can feel pulling through the hamstring and the thigh. You can feel pulling through the butt. Where you should not feel a stretch is your low back. All right, now we're going to switch back to the original foot, but this time we're going to do the exact same thing, but with a bent knee. This gets a different part of the calf, a different muscle, different tendons, different stretch. So we're gonna do a 12 count with a bent knee, really work on getting that heel to the ground, but this is also a really good opportunity to push through that arch and strengthen that foot. Because you don't want your arch to be collapsing in this position. We're retraining our foot to engage the foot and relax the calf. All right, let's switch. Again, we're retraining the foot to engage the foot, but relax the calf, getting that knee to the ground. No, sorry, not knee, excuse me. Heel to the ground. 
Wonderful. All right, let's slide over to the barbell now. Our calves get so tight throughout the day. So what we're going to do here is you can use the narrow part of the barbell or you can slide over and use the big part of the barbell. Whichever, the narrow part's going to give you more pressure. The big part's a little more gentle. And you're going to start with rolling out the, the calf with your foot straight in the air. If you find a tender spot, Congratulations, hang out right there. That's the spot that needs to be released. Again, if you, have, if you got shin splints going on, this is so important. Once you've gotten that rolled out for a few seconds, now we're gonna turn our foot out. So we're gonna get the outside of our calf from this position. You might find that different areas need help from this position. For me, for example, I really need help when my foot is straight in the air, I need help toward my heel. In this position, I need help toward my knee. And you'll find where those muscles are restricted, you're gonna find those areas where the fascia is bound up, and we're just blasting it apart. All right, now let's switch by putting our foot to the inside. And we're gonna work the inside of our calf here, and here again, I need more help toward my heel toward my ankle bone is where that's the most restricted. And if you're feeling like this is painful, guess what? You're doing it right, great job. Don't beat yourself to smithereens here, but you should be seeking discomfort. The road to health is one where you will actively seek discomfort in the decisions that you make throughout the day. All right, let's switch feet now. You guys are crushing it. For the first one, remember, foot straight in the air. Okay, now our foot's going to go to the outside. We're doing the outside of that calf. You guys are doing great. Everybody should be very proud of themselves today. I don't know about you, but I worked up a sweat. Go home and that came out of pool to jump in it. Had to drop everything in the pool last night. It's a vacuum. Okay, now we're going to switch to the inside. Great job. Now, from this seated position, we want to stretch out the front of the shin here. So what you're gonna do is very simply, grab your leg under here, you're gonna grab your foot and bring it toward you. And you should feel that stretch toward the front right here. So I'm pushing through my ankle. I'm not pushing through my thigh or my hip. I'm pushing through the ankle to get a stretch on the front of my shin. And it doesn't take much, but I'm going to hold that for a 12 count, and we're going to switch. If you can't get your foot underneath, that's fine. Go over the top. But you're going to bend through that ankle, feeling that stretch toward the top right through here. Beautiful. 12 count in that position. All right. And now, because I want to make sure you guys all thoroughly hate me before you go, we're going to do that the front with the barbell. All right, now, don't put a ton of pressure through this because this is going to be super painful. But right through here, you're going to work on getting the meaty part of that ankle. It might be easier in the middle of the barbell here on this one. But you're going to work on getting the meaty part of that shin on the barbell here and find those areas that are super restricted and super tight. Keeping weight, enough weight off of your shin to not destroy yourself because this is very tender through here. <laughs> Yeah, you doing the uh, kung fu push-ups? Did I tell you about those yet? Okay. We'll talk after. <laughs> All right, excellent. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to work on the thighs. So step number one, let's get those quads. This is super easy. All right, from here, we're just going to stand 
same leg, same hand. Same side leg, same side hand for a 12 count. Stretching is so underrated and we never do it. This is extremely important. After a workout, the best thing to do is stretch. Before a workout, the best thing to do is warm up. All right, now let's switch. Hands and switch feet, 12 count through here. You should be feeling this in the front of your thigh, in those quads. You may also feel it in your hip, for the front of your hip. All right, now we're gonna switch legs, but use the hand you're using right now. So you're gonna go cross. In my case, I've got right leg, left hand. Doesn't matter what leg you got, but switch hands. And this works a different part of the quad. It works the outside of the quad, very important. All right, switch that up all together. Remember, we're going opposites, good. A good chance to work balance, a good chance to engage your feet. Your right foot and then to your left hand. This is your right, nope. over to your left hand. There you go. Okay, beautiful. Now we're gonna work the butt and we're gonna go into this pigeon pose right here where we're gonna get the outside of your thigh and your butt stretched. Just do it to the best of your ability. Feel that through the outside of your butt. Just a 12 count and we're gonna switch. And switch. Excellent, get that butt, get that thigh. You'll notice that I'm not stretching the hamstring. For the most part, hamstrings are not tight enough and we're gonna use our best bang for our buck in terms of time. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work the hip flexors and the hip adductors. So from here, feet straight out in front of you, lunge to the side. You wanna get the middle right on the inside of that leg. Stretch out the hip adductor. These guys get so tight throughout the day, so tight. 12 count here, we're gonna switch. Remember, on this one we've got feet straight out in front of you like you're on train tracks. 12 count here. Now we're gonna switch to more like a uh, yoga warrior two. So we're gonna go back to the other side. Knee is gonna track over your foot on this one as you go. And this just gets a different look for that back leg. Another 12 count here. For the really important muscle groups, I'm visiting them twice with a 12 count, just as a rule. All right, let's switch. The direction you're going, that knee's gonna track over that foot. Good. 12 count. And now the last one we're gonna do is we're gonna work those hip flexors in a lunge. So feet are gonna be on train tracks, all right? My pelvis is engaged. I'm not, letting my, I'm not letting my low back arch out with this one. I'm gonna keep my hip engaged and I'm gonna come through. I wanna feel that through my hip in the front right here. Now, the next part we wanna feel it through, because this is great, but we're gonna bring that stretch up into where the hip flexor connects to the low back on the inside of your body. Fingers interlaced, push them out and up overhead we go. And you should feel that extra stretch on the inside of your core. All right, we're gonna switch now. Feet on train tracks. Straight out in front of you. Hips engaged, do not let the low back arch out here. Stretch through that hip. You're gonna feel it through the hip flexor in the front of your hip. And then from here, we're gonna interlace, bring it up overhead, Samson stretch and feel that through the front of your core. Awesome. Amazing workout. We warmed up, we strengthened, and we stretched. Great job, guys.